What's up guys, Will Gibbons here, and today I've got a carbon fiber bicycle frame. Now carbon fiber is easily recognizable by this kind of checkerboard pattern, but it's more than just a checkerboard. If we look closely, as I rotate this, the light will bounce off of the individual fibers in different directions. And so that's part of what produces this really cool material finish. Now, if you've tried to create this carbon fiber appearance in key shot in the past, it's been a little bit difficult and we've had to use some pretty weird workarounds. But what's cool is Keyshot 9 includes something called Real Cloth, a material that's super customizable. And today I'm going to show you how we can make a procedural carbon fiber using Keyshot 9's Real Cloth. A carbon fiber is used for its high strength to weight ratio, its versatility, and it comes in many forms. Today we'll focus on a traditional woven carbon fiber, which is actually a woven cloth of many small, strong synthetic strands. Now to form it into various shapes to be used on various products, a clear resin is often added. I hope to give you some ideas for your own renderings with these references on screen now. And depending on your use case, your approach will likely vary. Now before we start rendering some carbon fiber, I want to touch on every CAD user's mortal enemy, UV mapping. In order to use Keyshot's real cloth properly, a model must contain UVs that have been properly mapped. A UV map is just an invisible grid assigned to a model surface that tells a rendering software how a texture should be applied to that surface. U and V refer to the vertical and horizontal directions of the grid. The letters U and V are used to describe a two-dimensional workspace, such as a grid, to avoid being confused with X, Y, and Z, which often refer to the 3D workspace, such as the one your model is created in. So now when you create a model in CAD programs like SolidWorks, Fusion 360, or Creo, Surfaces of the model are automatically split into patches. These patches are defined by points in space and connected by splines, like the 3D version of uh, shapes made in Adobe Illustrator. Now CAD programs use NURBS to create efficient models with infinitely smooth surfaces and produce manufacturing data for machines. While NURBS data does contain UV coordinates, you typically cannot modify the UVs because it's tied to the NURBS data. This is a limitation of nearly all modern CAD programs. Now polygonal modeling software doesn't use NURBS to describe 3D surfaces. Instead, a network of polygons consisting of vertices, edges, and surfaces are used to create 3D models. Rather than irregular NURBS patches, polygonal data often appears as a grid of polygons. This grid makes it easier to assign texture coordinates to the model. Because of this, nearly every polygonal modeling program has built-in UV editing tools which allow you to manually edit the UV map, choosing exactly how textures will flow over the surface of the model. In summary, to take advantage of Keyshot's real cloth feature, we need a model in which the UVs have been properly assigned for the desired result. Because of this, I built a majority of this speaker model in Fusion 360, my CAD tool of choice, but then modeled the carbon fiber shell and the TRS cable using Blender, a free open source polygonal modeling program. I also used its UV editing tools to assign seams and proper UVs so my textures would flow over the surfaces exactly how I wanted. Showing you Blender's UV editing tools goes beyond the scope of this video, but if you're interested, I could cover that in another video in the future. Also, it looks like a future version of Keyshot may include UV mapping tools, so keep an eye open for that. Once the models were made, I imported them into Keyshot. For those who wish to follow along, I've packaged all the project files for you to download for free. Just head on over to willgibbons.com download. I'll include a starting Keyshot scene, a completed Keyshot scene, a 3D model, and my custom carbon fiber multi-material with variations, all for free. All right, once you've downloaded your project files, you're going to want to open up the starter scene, and this should launch in Keyshot 9. And what you'll see is a speaker model, and we have this broken into three separate parts. If we look at our model sets, we have a ground plane model set, a speaker model set, and the enclosure model set here. So go ahead and double click on the blue part, and we're going to change its material type from diffuse down to real cloth. And first thing we're going to do is edit the weave pattern to create our two over, two under carbon fiber weave. So change our warp and weft to a four by four grid. And I'm going to click on these fibers to create that over under pattern that I want. And this part just takes a little practice and uh, looking at a photo reference. So once our weave pattern looks good, we want to set the width and the tension to be the same on both the warp and weft. And I accidentally put a 
one for my tension at the top there, I meant to put a 0.1. So let's do 0.95 for the width and 0.1 for the tension on both of those, and then go ahead and hit apply and then close that box. Now at the very top here on the right, we have our scale and our angle options, which will just rotate our pattern and scale it. There is an option for distortion, but we'll come back to that. I'm gonna change my color to a 1% black for both the warp color as well as the weft color. And I wanna change my weft color specular to pure white, 100%. And for the warp, I'm gonna set this to just 50%. So it's not gonna reflect quite as much light. I want to set my refractive index to two for both of these. And that may not be totally scientifically accurate, but I wanna make them a little bit shinier and that seems to work well here. I'm going to put a 0.2 for my warp and weft color variation, which gives us some kind of random colors there. Now zooming in, you'll see our density and our fibers is too low. So if I increase this from 40 to something high, like 600, we get a ton of tiny little fibers in there. I'm gonna set the warp fiber detail to 0.9 to give me more visibility on there, more detail. And I'm gonna set the warp ply count and the warp ply pitch both down to one, which in my experience doesn't make a big difference, but uh, again, we don't really need those values to be anything higher. So once we've done that, we should see a bunch of little strands for our warp and weft looking pretty good. And the distortion value, I put a small value in there just to make it uh, less perfect. You see, if I crank it up to two, it gets all wavy. Um, but to really dial this in, I went with a scale of one millimeter and my distortion to 0.2, just enough to be less than perfect, but not so much that it's distracting. Now, if we go ahead and throw a different environment in here also, you should notice that this has a big effect on how the carbon fiber reflects the light. So the smaller and brighter the pins you have in your HDRI, the more reflective those little fibers will be and the more they'll stand out. So go ahead and play with different environments and see what effect they have on this material because again, lighting has a big effect on how your materials look. We're gonna go ahead and put the two panel straight 4K on here and then we'll proceed. The next thing we're gonna do is add a clear coat to this material. So open the material graph right click and then add a plastic material. This is going to be our label. We'll put that into our root node here and set its diffuse color to pure black. So now we have a pure black plastic on top of our real cloth. Then we're gonna right click and get a color to number node and we're gonna control the opacity of the plastic with this node. So double click the color to number and you'll see it's all black and we're gonna increase our output from value and this is going to be our opacity slider for our plastic label. And this basically is like our clear coat adjustment. So if we go really high, it's going to just be black plastic. And if we go somewhere in the middle, we'll get those reflections without it being too dark. Now, if we wanna go ahead and increase the reflection contrast, just increase your refractive index. And this may also allow you to reduce the overall opacity there as well. So I think I end up with about a 0.3 for my opacity on that label. And that clear coat starts looking pretty good. So next we're going to shift left click on that to copy that material, shift right click to paste linked to the inside of the speaker enclosure. Now, if we pop back into the material graph and convert this to a multi-material, this gives us the ability to make variations. So I'll go ahead and duplicate this material and I'll click that button up top to realign those nodes. And we're actually going to use the one real cloth material on both submaterials. So see how I connect those two? Let's go ahead and name the top one glossy. And then the next one is gonna be a matte finish. So we'll call it matte. And then all we have to do for this one is go into that plastic label and change the roughness value. So I added 0.1 roughness, and you'll see how it kind of spreads those reflections out, making it look like a matte finish. Pretty cool. So I'm actually adding one more or duplicating that one more time and deleting that plastic label. And what this is going to allow us to do is create a raw or an uncoated version of that carbon fiber. 
And this time we don't use the same real cloth. And here's why. We're actually going to go and turn on flyaway fibers. And this is what's going to give us some more detail on that raw carbon fiber that makes it look more realistic. Like little fibers are peeling away from the material. And if you look at reference photos, you'll see that this actually happens in real life. Now I'm gonna take a second to experiment with some of these values to really dial in the look. So I'll start by making the radius of the flyaway smaller and increase the direction a little bit. And if you hover over each of these values, it's going to tell you what they do. And at this point, it's just a matter of experimenting and then hitting execute on the geometry node again, and that will give you a different look. So this is looking too hairy and, and they stick out too much. So I'm gonna play around with some of these values here. And the direction, if we increase this value, it should align these fibers more with the carbon fiber weave. So that should look more realistic. I'll reduce the randomness also so they don't stick out so crazy. And I'll make the length a little shorter. And after executing that node again, you'll see now those fibers are going in the direction of the weave much better. So again, I'm gonna finesse these values a little bit further until I find something that I like. All right, and probably this is about where I'm gonna leave it. I don't want a bunch of fibers to be distracting, but I do want that detail to be in there in case we go in for a very, very close up shot. And then you'll be, you know, pleasantly surprised to have all that detail. So now what do we do with this raw fiber or raw carbon fiber? We can shift left click and then control shift right click to paste that onto the cable in the back. That's going to allow us to paste it as a copy. So now we can go in here and make sure that it looks good on our cable. And I'm gonna set the scale down to half a millimeter just to make that really small. And if it's too distracting, seeing that strong carbon fiber appearance, what you can do is just reduce the overall specular value for both the warp and the weft to make it just overall a lot more subtle of an uh, appearance. And again, I don't want this to distract from the rest of the carbon fiber in the scene. So I'm just showing you how you can use the same material kind of as a multi-purpose uh, material. And of course, if we zoom in real close, we should see those flyaway fibers, which is always nice. So back to the main enclosure here. We have our carbon fiber on the top and bottom, but now we need to take care of our edge. So double click the orange part and change its material to plastic. Go into the material graph here, align our nodes, and add a texture called brushed. Now this texture is going to follow our um, UVs, which I set up in, in Blender, of course. So I'm gonna go ahead and scale this guy down and really, really small. Um, basically as small as I need to go until it looks about right. And I want these lines to basically flow across um, this edge to look like the laminated plies of carbon fiber. So I'm gonna increase the length to 10 so these look like long parallel lines. This is something that could also be used for say bent plywood, just to give you guys some ideas. So I think I end up uh, here, I think 20 or so looks good. Also, if you are curious, you can see there's a seam in the back right where that uh, lines up there. That's where my seam was for that, that edge when I did my UV mapping. Okay, so if we go in here, I think I wanna go a little bit smaller here. I'll bring the width down, 0 0.003. I think that's looking pretty good now. Maybe even a touch smaller, 0 0.002. And again, this is all up to you. It depends on how close you're gonna get in with the camera on this. But at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and change my orange to a black color for that plastic. And then we'll plug the brushed into our bump and see if we can get some bump texture out of this. Double click the brushed node and we're gonna go into our bump height and set that from 0.5 uh, to about 0.75. We'll plug that into our roughness of our plastic as well, and we're gonna get a color to number node on that roughness. Hit C to preview that guy, and we're going to reduce our output value to darken it. This is going to, um, oh, and we're gonna add a little bit of, uh, make our output from 0.01, just make it a little bit brighter. But what this is gonna do is basically take our roughness value and we're gonna dial this in here. And as we bring these values closer together, we're gonna to have just a subtle difference there between the roughness. The black values or the darker values will produce a shinier effect. 
whereas the white values are going to produce a more rough appearance. So again, this is all to taste. I'm just playing around with these values here, but um, increasing your output from will make the black values brighter, and in reducing your output to will make the white values darker as um, darker. Yeah, that's right. So anyway, when all is said and done, we're looking for a kind of a subtle balance between our, our light and dark values here, and that's going to drive the roughness, and that's going to stretch out reflections, uh, creating a little bit of that kind of anisotropic effect that we like there too. So if I go back into my brush value, my bump height's not quite high enough, so I'm going to bump that up to a little higher, maybe 1.5. I'll exaggerate that. And I'm also going to plug this into our specular value of our plastic and add another color to number. And once again, this is going to control how much light reflects off the material. So by playing with these values a bit, we can make it not quite so shiny or not quite so reflective. Um, and overall, I think that looks pretty good. It should look pretty rough because when you have a laminated carbon fiber, it's going to give you that kind of very rough edge. So now I'm gonna make sure I name my material so we can save it to our library. I'll call mine custom carbon fiber um, real cloth. And then I'll go ahead and hit the save button and throw this into my custom folder and hit okay. Actually, I'm gonna hit cancel, but you can hit okay if you wanna keep it. And at that point, we're looking pretty good. Um, I'm going to see, you know, check out my matte versus glossy finish. I like the way the glossy looks. And um, last but not least, I'm gonna make sure I have all my parts on. So I'm gonna turn on all these other model sets. So we see how everything looks together. And overall, this is where we end up. So hopefully you guys learned something through this process. Um, I know it was fast, but I wanted to keep this tutorial as short as possible. So hopefully it's not too fast. And if you guys need to, you can pause or um, you know watch it a couple times. But uh, I encourage you to experiment. Let me know how it goes. Uh, comment down below if there were any questions or anything I missed. And be sure to upload your results to Instagram and tag myself at Will Gibbons Design and use the appropriate hashtags down below so you can be featured in the Render Weekly contest or perhaps by Keyshot as well. Anyway, guys, uh, last but not least, if we go in and uh, if you want, you can add a photographic image style. This allows us to crank that contrast and exposure a bit, which is what I find really makes the image pop. This will give you that nice contrast in your carbon fiber, maybe a little um, bloom if you want. If you want to get those that kind of glowy, dreamy effect, you can crank the bloom up, add a bloom radius that's pretty big, and then increase your threshold to reduce the effect so it only appears on the brightest areas. And then when all is said and done, when you like what you've got, I like to take my bloom intensity down just a little bit. About 0.5 is good for me. So anyway, I hope you guys had fun. I hope you learned a lot. Let me know if you have any questions. Say hi on, on the social medias. And again, just check all the links down below. I'll have as much information um, as I can there for you. But um, yeah, until next time, happy rendering, guys.